If you are not asking on the right questions, then you are communicating wrongly. In this presentation, I want to help you improve your communication skills by learning how to ask the right questions. Questions are powerful tools that we can use to engage in powerful and meaningful conversations. They help us enhance collaboration and make connections. We can build trust and develop relationships. You can attain knowledge, you can gain knowledge. Great questions can help us to solve problems and impact decision making. Overall, being able to ask the right questions is going to help you drive improvement. So by the end of this tutorial, you'll be able, you'll be more equipped with the tools that you need to start asking much better questions. How are we going to do that? First, I'm going to take you through the different types of questions that are available out there for you to start using. After that, we are going to find out what a good question asker should be like. In third place, we are going to go through the way in which we should formulate good questions. And to finish it off, we have to understand, we have to know what we need to avoid when asking questions. Let's begin. Point number one, what is a good question? A good question has to be clear, concise and direct. It avoids confusion and goes straight to the point. For example, instead of repeatedly asking different versions of the same question, ask a single well thought out question that provides all the information you need. However, a great question does more than that. It opens up conversations and uncovers greater insights. It is not just about getting a yes-no answer. A great question is about understanding the bigger picture. Great questions are the key to uncovering valuable information and fostering engaging discussions. It is time to talk about the different types of questions that, that are available for you to use during your conversations. If you want to ask a great question, it's a good idea to get familiar with the different types that you can use. I am going to talk about three different types. Open-ended questions, follow-up questions, and leading questions. First, let's talk about open-ended questions. These require more than yes or no answers and encourage elaboration. For instance, how do you feel about the new policy updates at work? These type of questions invite detailed responses and opens the door for further discussion. Other examples of open-ended questions are what are your thoughts on the current project we're working on? And uh, do you have any suggestions for improvement? What accomplishments are you most proud of over the past quarter? And what goals do you have for the next quarter? How do you feel about the support and resources you are receiving? And what additional tools or assistance do you think will help you perform better. The next group of questions that is going to help us improve our communication skills and make us come across more professional and better at active listening is follow-up questions. First, we're going to look into the definition of a follow-up question. After that, we need to understand the importance or why they are so necessary. Then we're going to look into the different types and I'm going to give you some examples of each type. And finally, I'm going to share with you some tips that are going to help you put into practice the art of using follow-up questions in the workplace, of course. Let's begin with the definition. What is a follow-up question? A follow-up question is a question that we ask after an initial question or response in order to get more understanding or to clarify something or just to delve deeper into a topic. They are essential in demonstrating active listening 
ensuring comprehension and maintaining the flow of the conversation. Why are follow-up questions so important? Basically, five reasons. Number one, they clarify and confirm understanding. They help ensure that all the parties have a clear and accurate understanding of the information shared. Second reason, they encourage detailed responses. They prompt the speaker to provide more detailed and comprehensive answers. Number three, they demonstrate active listening. They show that you are interested and engaged in what is being discussed. Reason number four, why they are so important, they help us build relationships. They foster better communication and stronger relationships by showing empathy and interest. And finally, reason number five, they promote deeper exploration. They allow for a more thorough exploration of topics leading to better decision-making and problem-solving. Next, it's time to see the different types and we are also going to have a look at some examples. Clarifying, probing, reflective, encouraging, hypothetical. Those are the five types of follow-up questions that you need to learn. Clarifying questions to ensure understanding. For example, can you elaborate on that point, please? Or what did you mean by blah, blah, blah? Probing questions to dig deeper into the topic. Why do you think that is the case? Can you tell me more about that, please? Reflective questions to reflect back on what was said and confirm accuracy. For example, so, you're saying that blah, blah, blah. If I understand correctly, you mean blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Encouraging questions to prompt more information or idea. What happened next? How did you come to that conclusion? How did you come to that conclusion? And finally, hypothetical questions to explore different scenarios or possibilities. For example, what would happen if blah, blah, blah? How would you handle blah, blah, blah? What tips can I give you for effective follow-up questions? Number one, listen actively or active listening. Pay full attention to the speaker and note the key ideas very obvious. Number two, be specific. Tailor your questions to the context and blah, blah, blah. tailor your questions to the context and details provided. Be specific. Show empathy is number three. Be mindful of the speaker's perspective and feelings. Number four, be patient. Hmm. <laughs> Give the speaker time to think and respond fully. Do not interrupt. And number five, be neutral. Huh? What does that mean? It means that you need to avoid leading questions that suggest a particular answer. No leading questions. Try to avoid them. Having said that, time to talk about leading questions. What are leading questions? Leading questions are questions that are framed in such a way that they prompt or encourage the responder to answer or to give a specific answers, to answer in a specific way. These questions often contain the desired answer in the question itself or suggest the answer the questioner is looking for. They can be used to guide conversation or confirm assumptions or steer discussion towards a particular outcome. However, they can also be seen as manipulative if they are not used carefully. Let me give you some examples. You would agree that our product's new feature will save your company a lot of time, wouldn't you? That's the leading question. What would be the neutral version of that question? 
Let's have a look. How do you think our product new feature will impact your company's efficiency? Another example. Don't you think that completing the project ahead of a schedule was a great achievement? The neutral version of that leading question would sound something like, how do you feel about the timeline in which the project was completed? In conclusion, leading questions can be effective in confirming specific points or steering the conversation in a desired direction. But it's important to balance them with neutral questions to ensure genuine feedback and responses. Now it's time to talk about what makes you a good question asker. Basically, there are three qualities that you have to demonstrate. The first one is curiosity. The second one is purposefulness. And the third one is bravery. Curiosity. A good question asker is naturally curious. They probe beyond the surface, seeking new information. For instance, instead of asking, how was your meeting? You could ask instead, what was the most surprising fact of your meeting today? What was the most surprising outcome of the meeting today? That is curiosity. Second one is purposefulness. A good question asker has to be intentional with the questioning, with the questions. You need to know why you are asking and what you are hoping to learn. For example, imagine that you are trying to understand the delay in a project or the delay of a project. You might ask, can you walk me through the challenges that caused the delay? That is purposefulness. What about bravery? Don't shy away from tough questions, even if they might ruffle some feathers. Because asking challenging or critical questions can lead to clarity and therefore better decision making. So don't shy away from asking difficult or tough questions. Those are the three qualities that a good question asker must always have in mind. Remember, curiosity, bravery, and purposefulness. Now you know what qualities a good question asker must have. It is time then to give you some tips for better question asking. Tip number one. Be a good listener. This one is very obvious. If you want to ask a great question, you need to fully understand what the other person is talking about. So you need to listen, you need to pay attention. This will show at the same time that you are respectful and that you are interested. Number two, don't fear your questions. Sometimes, if you're not clear on something, you just need to ask for clarification. There are no wrong questions, especially if you are learning. So remember, don't fear your questions. Number three, do your research. If you have the opportunity, if you want to prepare in advance and you want to ask good questions, the best thing to do is to do some research. This will ensure that your questions are relevant and focused. Tip number four, go with the flow. What do I mean by that? Let the conversation guide you. Don't be afraid to explore new topics if they arise naturally. Number five is one of my favorites, silence. Give yourself the time to think about what you are going to ask. So don't rush your answers and don't rush your questions. Take your time. Number six, ask probing questions. These questions promote deeper thinking and can reveal valuable insights. For example, what are you most concerned about this project? Probing questions. Number seven, Keep your questions short. This one is also one of my favorites. Don't ask very long questions, never ending questions, or lots of questions at the same time. No, avoid that. Keep them simple, nice and sweet, straight to the point. That's an ability. Number eight, 
get your sequence right. Start with easy questions, and then you can move gradually to more complex questions. Do not start your questions right away with something very complicated. You need to ease in. You need to allow the other person to accommodate to the conversation and the situation. And the last one, number nine, use the appropriate tone. Match your tone to the situation. Be professional when needed, but don't be afraid to be casual if it's appropriate. That's it. Those are my nine tips to start asking great questions. Finally, let's talk about the things that we should avoid or we should minimize when asking questions or communicating in general. Number one, avoid leading questions or just no questions. If you can, go for open-ended questions. Asking leading questions limits honest responses. And asking lots of yes-no questions can shut down the conversation. The second thing you should avoid is ignoring clear signals, like for example, non-verbal cues. If somebody seems uncomfortable, you need to realize about that and you need to adjust and change your approach. You need to pay attention to the body language and act accordingly. Mm -hmm.